Здравствуйте, товарищи. Welcome to day three of Russian through propaganda. My name is Mark Pettis, and we're continuing today with uh, Russian pronunciation. This will conclude our coverage of Russian pronunciation. And today we're kind of picking up the bits and pieces that are left over uh, following yesterday's lesson, where we looked at those five general principles that are sort of universally important for good Russian pronunciation. Today we're looking at a few, again, details that uh, are some of which are extremely important. They uh, they account for a lot of common mistakes made by beginning students, and so we want to pay careful attention to those. As I mentioned yesterday, you might want to uh, go back every now and then to day two and also to today's lesson, day three, and just continue to review and practice. The more Russian you hear, the easier it will be for your ear, your ear to process some of these unfamiliar sounds. And the better you hear them, the better you should be able to begin reproducing them. So it will take some time, especially as I mentioned with uh, soft consonants. Those tend to uh, prove the most difficult uh, element of pronouncing Russian well for beginning students. So let's dive right in. Our first point, which we mentioned already, is that Russian generally does not have silent letters. We'll look at the very few exceptions to that rule in a moment. But the most important, perhaps, is uh, the Russian letter yeah. Again, we see that letter on the printed page and we get interference from English. We think E, and depending on its position, we may read that as a silent E the way we might in English. So this is very simple, of course, in theory. Just remember that yeah is always yeah, unless it's reduced, of course, but it's always going to constitute a full syllable, right? Not only is it not silent, it's an entire syllable and we always pronounce it. So let's just look at a few examples. In all of these, you see we have a final position, yeah, right? So again, the, temp the temptation is to look at the Russian word for field and say pole or something, right? If we transcribe this into English letters, we would get P-O-L-E, pole, right? But the Russian is polia, polia, two syllables, two vowels, two syllables. Next, uh, C, if we transcribe that into English, we would get M-O-R-E, and we would be tempted to say more, right? But the Russian word is morye, morye, two vowels, two syllables. Uh, next one, activity, zanyatye. So we have a, ya, e, ye, four vowels, four syllables, and that includes the final yeah, zanyatye, zanyatye. Finally, heart, sierce, sierce. Right? In this case, we have two yes, therefore two syllables. And as we remember, the final yeah there after uh, the consonant s is normally pronounced like a, eh. sierce, sierce. When we introduce our grammar, we'll begin very quickly looking at Russian adjectives, and we've already glimpsed how they change their endings depending on the gender of the noun they're modifying. So we'll discuss that in detail later, but we've already seen that any given adjective has a masculine, feminine, and neuter form. And uh, again, we'll learn what this really means later. Today, we're just looking at pronunciation, and we want to focus on these endings, first of all, because they're so common and also because they, many of them have two vowels, and so it's a place where students often get tripped up if they fail to pronounce both vowels clearly. Novi. Novi. Novaya. 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 Starry, 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 starry. Now you may have noticed in the first two examples that the feminine and neuter forms can be a little bit difficult to distinguish when you hear them because of reduction, right? Since both the that the if we look at starre, right, that final a ah is unstressed, 
And the final ya is also unstressed. So we get staraya, staraya, right, if we're reducing those properly. For old, the uh, for, for the neuter form of old, the final o is also unstressed, so it reduces to a. Uh, but remember that the final ye it does not reduce. We pronounce that fully as ye. But again, this uh, with that, that one slight difference aside, uh, these words sound quite alike. Let's go through one more time and hear, see if you can hear any difference. Starry is the masculine. That one's clear. Starya. 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 Kharoshi. Kharoshi. Kharoshaya. 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 Plachoy. Plachoy. Plachaya. Plachaya. Plachoya. Plachoya. The word plachoy, as you may have noticed, is an instressed adjective. So we're already seeing how the stress can pop up in different places, just depending on the given word. And uh, I'm sure you noticed that when the ending, the adjectival endings are stressed, you can clearly distinguish between them because you don't, you're not getting the reduction, right? So plachoy, plachaya, plachoya, those are all clearly distinguishable. Uh, no matter how quickly someone's speaking. Um, the next uh, adjective, Bolshoi, as in Bolshoi Theater, is also in stress. Bolshoi. Bolshoi. Bolshaya. Bolshaya. Bolshoya. Bolshoya. Marinki Marinki Marinkaya 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 If we look back at those last two adjectives, we see that we have a soft consonant uh, in Bolshoi, that's a soft L, and in Malinki, a soft N, and that's obvious here because they're followed by the soft sign. But those soft sounds here are followed by another consonant. And when you see a soft uh, consonant in the middle of a word like this that's directly followed by another consonant, it can be hard to soften that uh, consonant properly. So you might want to practice saying this very slowly and kind of splitting it up into two parts. For example, a Bolshoi, we could split that up into Bai, Bai, Shoi, Bal Shoi, Bal Shoi. Or to take uh, Malinki, split that up into Maling, Maling, Malinki, Malinki. So that's something to practice, and you'll see over time that uh, at first it can be hard to pronounce soft consonants at all. Uh, you'll probably get good at it when at first when they're at the end of a word. They're very, it's very conspicuous there, and you don't have anything coming afterwards to sort of interfere with your pronunciation. But pronouncing them in the middle of a word can be is probably the greatest challenge. So it'll take a lot of practice. Scoochly. 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 Skuchnaya, skuchnaya, lyorki, lyorki. As we'll discuss in a moment, that g, that g sound, is actually being pronounced like a ch. We'll talk about that in a moment. Lyorkaya, lyorkaya, lyorkaya. So we know that the Russian letter ye is never silent, and uh, that's especially important to remember at the beginning of words. As we've mentioned yesterday, 
it's a common mistake to see an initial yeah and pronounce it as, for example, ah, eh, right? So remember that yeah uh, begins with a ikrat, an ikratka, yeah? That is, in English, a Y sound. Yishua. Yishua. Now remember here that initial unstressed yeah is reducing to a yeah, right? So we have to always keep in mind everything we learned yesterday. Uh, we, we are getting all of these same sort of deviations from how we're spelling the words based on vowel reduction, consonant devoicing, and so forth. So be listening for all of those uh, elements. Yishua. Yishua. Yida. Yida. Same reduction. Yeah, initially unstressed becomes yeah. Yosh. Yosh. Right there, we have an initial yaw, and the same principle holds. We want to begin the sound, uh, the, the word with a yeah, right? With an ikratka, yeah. Examian. Examian. Uh, this word, of course, begins not with yeah, but with a. Eh. Don't forget a. Eh. You might want to circle it again in your in your book because it, it is much less common, as you probably noticed, than yeah. And again, it's one of these letters that students sort of tend to forget. Uh, and that's too bad because it's a perfectly good letter. And again, it's to be distinguished from yeah. So one more time. Examian. Examian. We've said generally that Russian does not have silent letters. That includes, of course, the yeah, as we just uh, reviewed. And generally, that rule holds up very well. There are very, very few exceptions, right? When we write out a letter and literally don't pronounce it at all. And we're going to look now at six of the most common examples, two of which are extremely common in everyday uh, greetings and, and uh, sort of being polite, polite expressions. Uh, but you should certainly not get the idea that this happens on any sort of regular basis. It's limited to a very, very few number, very few examples. And we'll review all of them right now. Your standard Russian greeting is Zdrastvuitye. Zdrastvuitye. We're dropping the V, right? So instead of saying Zdrastvuitye, the way we're spelling this word, we say Zdrastvuitye. And that allows us to now practice our, our greeting in this course. Zdrastvitye tavarishi. Zdrastvitye tavarishi. Greeting comrades. Right, again, Russians nowadays would not usually greet each other as tavarishi. That's just something we're doing for fun. Um, remember that this word literally is an imperative. It means be healthy. Be healthy. Zdrastvitye. We've also seen an informal greeting. Privyet. Privyet. So that's something you can just say to a friend, people you're close to. We'll talk about more about that in an, in an upcoming lesson. In the word for feeling, we also drop the v. We say chustva, chustva, instead of chustva. Drop the v. We get chustva. In the word for sun, we drop the l. We say sonsa, sonsa. In the word for happy, we drop the t, and we say shislivy, shislivy. Every once in a while, a student asks me, uh, or they express surprise that, oh, Russian does have a word for happy, or happiness, or joy. I think some people have heard some rumor that uh, you know, since there is no joy in Russia, there's no word corresponding to this non-existent concept. Of course, it's total nonsense. As you can already see, there is a word for happy in Russian. In the word for late, we drop the D and we get pozna, pozna. And finally, a very common word, of course, the magic word, Balshevnaya Slova, the magic word, Pajalsta, Pajalsta. Now there we're in fact dropping two letters, which is very unusual, right? 
So we're writing pajalusta, but we're saying pajalsta, pajalsta. In a few very, uh, again, a very limited number of examples, uh, a given consonant will be, will be pronounced as though it were a different consonant. And we've already seen most of these examples yesterday. Uh, first is the combination S, CH, right, which is pronounced like SH, that double uh, consonant that we've already learned. Shastya, Shastya, Shastivi. Shislivy, short, short. In these two very common words, the ch is normally pronounced as sh. So the word for what is not sto, but rather sto, sto. And the word for of course is not konyechna but rather konyeshna, konyeshna, konyeshna. Finally, there are just a couple of instances where the Russian g is pronounced like kha. Uh, this occurs in two adjectives and then in the pronunciation of the Russian for God. Again, this is quite unusual, so let's just focus on these three examples. Lyorki. Lyorki, Miarki, Miarki, Borg, Borg. Next comes the topic of syllabic consonants. And if we were studying certain other Slavic languages, like Czech, for example, we would talk about this very carefully because it's a regular feature of the language. Uh, Czech has a syllabic R and a syllabic L, and um, that allows Czechs to write quite a few words without any written vowels whatsoever. There's a kind of famous example, somewhat nonsensical, that reads Sturch Perst Skurskirk. It means uh, something like stick your finger through or across your neck. So it doesn't make much sense, but it's one of several examples of an uh, entire Czech sentence that has not a single vowel. But of course, that's only half true. We don't write a vowel, but of course, we have to have a vowel sound to have a syllable, much less a word. So there are, in fact, uh, there is, in fact, a vowel in each of those words. Uh, it's just represented by an R. Uh, so we're basically inserting a very short vowel and sort of an uh sound in front of the consonant sound itself, R. That can also happen uh, in Czech with L. For example, the river that runs through Prague is the Voltava. Voltava, right? Spelled V-L-T-A-V-A. -A. Uh, now, Russian doesn't really have syllabic consonants in that sense. In fact, if we were being strict about counting syllables in Russian, we would never count uh, what could be thought of as a syllabic R. So if you look at our first example, teatr. Well, if we were to truly, if we count the vowels as we normally do to, to get a syllable count, we have yeah, ah, that's two vowels, therefore really two syllables if we're being strict about it. And later when we're reading poetry, if we're counting uh, the syllables in order to talk about the poetic meter and so forth, right in a very strict fashion, we would indeed say that teatr is only two syllables. But if we listen closely to how, how it's normally said, we really hear something like more, more like three syllables, teatr. Right? It's not simply teatr, teatr, right? which would be closer to a truly two-syllable word. Uh, so let's read through these examples. And again, we're, dealing, we're thinking about R and L here usually, but we'll see a couple of other examples in Russian, uh, one with N, one with M, where we get something similar. Teatr, teatr, rubel. Rubel, Jizin, Jizin, Semester, Semester, Kreml, Kreml.
and communism. Communism. Next, let's look at consonant clusters in Russian. This is not a very problematic topic. Uh, Russian consonant clusters tend not to be very thorny. Um, some of them may strike us at first as slightly unusual, but not really too hard to pronounce as long as we are focused on it. Just for fun, you might look at a language with truly difficult consonant clusters. For example, Georgian. Uh, one example that's often seen is I'm doing the best I can with that. Try it at home. It means literally you peel us. So it's uh, maybe not a word used in everyday speech too often, but just in his example, uh, you, count the, you count the consonants, right? How many consonants is that in a row? Hard to believe. So compared to that, of course, Russian is quite easy. Let's just look at a few examples and uh, practice some slightly unusual clusters. Ptitsa. Ptitsa. Okay, that may sound a bit odd. A P followed by a T. Ptitsa. But usually not hard to say. And again, we need to note that this word is two syllables, right? We have two vowels, E, A, Ptitsa. Right? We can't say something like Ptitsa which we may be tempted to do in order to break up this unfamiliar cluster. Ptitsa. Mgla. Fog or mist. Mgla. Mgla. Darkness is tma. That's a bit tricky. You have a soft T followed by an N, right? So a cluster involving a soft consonant. Tma. Tma. The word for gaze is probably the most difficult cluster that comes to mind since we have v, z, g, l, and then if we count the ikratke as sound that begins the soft vowel ya, ja, then I guess that gives us five consonants in a row. So that's about as long as a of a cluster as you'll ever see in Russian. And we pronounce this word vzgliad. Vzgliad. Fabric is tkain. Tkain. So again, a bit unusual, but not really hard to pronounce. Tkain. Finally, a rather unusual word. Mercury is rtuit. Rtuit. How many syllables? One syllable only, right? U. Only one vowel. That means one syllable. Next comes a topic that, while rather easily explained, it always confuses students, and, and the confusion often lasts for at least a semester, if not two or more. Um, and that is, what happens if we have a soft consonant followed by a soft vowel? That means a consonant that itself is followed by a soft sign showing us that it's soft. And then that combination is followed by a soft vowel like ya ja or ye. Yeah. Well, the bottom line is quite simple. That's written exactly as it's pronounced and vice versa. So uh, we could just leave it there. But let's look more closely and see how to practice pronouncing this combination and also take careful note of why we're writing it this way. We're, again, the simple reason is we're writing it as it's pronounced. So the spelling is not accidental, and certainly the soft sign is not somehow superfluous. You know, students see the combination, for example, in the word shast, yeah, and they think, well, the yeah is a soft vowel, as we learned. So, of course, it would mark the preceding T as soft. So what do we need the soft sign for? Well, the reason is that we don't simply have soft T plus an E eh vowel. We have soft T, which is then followed by a full-fledged soft vowel, yeah. So the way we spell this and the way we say it is indeed different from the way we would spell and say it without a soft sign. If we look again at the word for joy, 
we can break that down into shist, shist, with a soft T, followed by yeah, right? So to pronounce that properly, you can break it up and try pausing ever so slightly be between the soft T and the following soft vowel. That will give you a chance to sort of fully pronounce the soft consonant and then, as it were, start anew with your soft vowel instead of allowing them to blur together. Shust, shust, yeah, shust, yeah, shust, yeah. Right, and not simply shust, yeah, shust, yeah, shust, yeah. Next comes dress. Plot, yeah, plot, yeah, plot, yeah. You can start by splitting the word up completely into two components and then trying to bring them closer and closer together so that you get what sounds like one word. Plot, yeah, plot, yeah, plot, yeah. And compare that to plot, yeah, plot, yeah. Right, that's what we'd get if we were simply writing T followed by the yeah. Family is sim ya, sim, sim ya, sim ya, sim ya. Again, you may notice how the, the slightest pause there between those two elements allows us to pronounce it correctly. Article is stat ya, stat ya, stat ya, and not simply. Statia, statia, statia. Statia. Bench is scam, scam ya, scam ya, scam ya. As you can imagine, if we're if Russians are speaking at a normal pace, uh, this distinction can be very difficult to hear, but it is noticeable. Um, so it's one of these subtleties that may take a while for your ear to pick up on if you're hearing it in the normal flow of speech. But the difference is there. Again, we're spelling these words differently for a reason, and we're pronouncing them differently than we would if they didn't feature this soft sign in their spelling. Now let's practice the chapter vocab. So just more pronunciation practice, and now we're already previewing our chapter vocabulary, much of which we've already seen in the examples thus far. Um, and we're going to preview a bit of our grammar, right? Uh, grammatical gender. We're going to talk a lot more about this very soon. By that, by the term grammatical gender, we simply mean that all nouns in Russian have gender, regardless of whether or not they are biological beings or something. They all have grammatical gender. Masculine, feminine, or neuter. The good news is that in Russian, we can almost always spot the gender, determine the noun's gender, simply by looking at the word. Uh, that's really great news, even uh, comparing Russian with certain so-called easy languages like French or German, for which you would have to simply memorize the gender of any given noun in most cases. Let's start with feminine nouns, and we see that uh, hard feminine nouns end in a, ah, and soft feminine nouns end in ya. Already we're seeing as well that this hard soft distinction is going to be very important. Already when we begin our study of nouns, we're seeing this distinction in the endings of hard nouns versus soft nouns. And again, we can see this difference simply by looking at the way the word's spelled. If it ends in a, it's a hard feminine. If it ends in ya, it's a soft feminine. Kniga. Kniga, komnata, komnata, adjezda, adjezda, rabota, rabota, kartina, kartina, problema, problema. Zadacha. 
Задача. Ручка. Ручка. Лампа. Лампа. Рубашка. Рубашка. Футболка. Футболка. Этажерка. Этажерка. Машина. Машина. Передача. Передача. Ошибка. Ошибка. Страница. Страница. Газета. Газета. Сумка. Сумка. Тема. Тема. Now for some soft feminine nouns and look them over and again you'll see you can spot first that they are feminine nouns and that they are soft feminine nouns because they end in ya. Идея. Идея. Неделя. Неделя. Простыня. Простыня. Статья. Статья. Фотография. Фотография. История. История. Фамилия. Фамилия. Семья. Семья. Next come neuter nouns. They end in о for hard neuters and е yeah for soft neuters. Again, we can simply look at a noun and spot that it's neuter. If it ends in о, it's hard. If it ends in е, yeah, it's a soft neuter. Дело. Дело. Окно. Окно. Место. Место. Зеркало. Зеркало. Кресло. Кресло. Письмо. Письмо. Одеяло. Одеяло. Мыло. Мыло. Утро. Утро. Пальто. Пальто. Кино. Кино. Имя. Имя. As you see in the footnote, that's an un very unusual type of neuter noun that ends in ya. So here's a slight exception to the rules we've seen thus far for spotting gender. And we'll talk more about that in the future. We're including it here now just because it's a very important noun. Imya is your first name. Familia is your last name. Now for some soft neuters, and we see these mostly end in ye, which we know is a soft vowel. Uh, we see one example that actually ends in your. So soft neuters can uh, actually end in your, but usually they end in ye. Платье. Платье. Полотенце. Полотенце. Белье. Белье. Расписание. Расписание. Упражнение. 
упражнение. Задание. Задание. Finally, we have our masculine nouns, and we see that they have no ending, actually. They end, or we could say they end in a consonant, right? Uh, they don't have an ending in the sense that they, uh, and, uh, the feminine a ah, or the neuter or is a nominative case ending. In the nominative case, and we'll talk more about that, what, what that means very soon, masculine nouns have no ending. Or for practical purposes, we could say that they end in a consonant. Hard masculines end in a hard consonant. Stole. Stole. Stool. Stool. Velocipiet. Velocipiet. Telephone. Telephone. Computer. Computer. Телевизор. Телевизор. Плакат. Плакат. Карандаш. Карандаш. Рюкзак. Рюкзак. Ковер. Ковер. Мяч. Мяч. Ключ. Ключ. Вечер. Вечер. Зонт. Зонт. Сериал. Сериал. Film, film, journal, journal, вопрос, вопрос, ответ, ответ, кошелек. Кошелек. Finally, our soft masculines end in a soft consonant. So again, we see clearly this, this distinction between hard and soft endings and nouns. Hard masculines end in a hard consonant. Soft masculines end in a soft consonant, meaning that they're always going to end in a soft sign. Shampooing, shampooing, slavar, slavar, dien, dien. Now we forgot to mention that some uh, masculines, uh, soft masculine nouns, end in an ikratkaya, and we can remember that ikratkaya. Uh, much like the vowel E is associated with phonetic softness. So at this point, we can maybe see why um, a word like musier is considered soft. And that will be more clear as we start adding new endings to nouns like, like these, these soft nouns ending in ikratkaya. Musier. Musier. Cafetieri. Cafetieri. Now let's preview some of our uh, adjectives we'll be using in this chapter. So again, a little preview of the vocabulary, also pronoun uh, practicing pronunciation, and pay special attention to the endings of these adjectives. Again, remembering that some of them have multiple vowels. We need to take care to pronounce each of those vowels very clearly especially if it's a final yeah. Remember, that's never silent. I'll just repeat each of these once and uh, listen for the uh, differences between the endings. Masculine, feminine, neuter. Novi. 
новая, новая, старый, старая, старая, чистый, чистая, чистая, грязный, грязная. Грязное, дорогой, дорогая, дорогое, дешевый, дешевое, дешевое, трудный, трудное. Трудное, легкий, легкая, легкая, плохой, плохая, плохое, хороший, хорошая. Хорошее. Большой. Большая. Большое. Маленький. Маленькая. Маленькая. Важный. Важное, важное, любимый, любимая, любимая, ужасный, ужасная, ужасная, русский. Русская, Ру русская. Again, you may notice that unless the ending is stressed, right, unless we happen to have an unstressed adjective, the neuter and the feminine forms can be quite difficult to distinguish in speech. Finally, let's read through the alphabet now in proper alphabetical order, right? Remember yesterday we were grouping the letters, or oh, sorry, on day one, we were grouping the letters for learning purposes uh, in order to juxtapose letters that are frequently confused or whatever. Today, let's go through and finally read the names of the letters. In some cases in the days one and two, I may have fudged that a little bit. Uh, in some cases, I used the the Latin names for the letters just to make perfectly clear what sound we were talking about. Uh, but these are now the proper Russian names for the actual Cyrillic letters. A, B, V, G, D, Y, Y, Z, Z, I, I краткая, which means short E, I краткая, K, L, M, N, O, P, R, S, T, U, F, or F, you'll sometimes hear, H, C, Ch, Sh, Sh, Tjordi znak, Literally hard sign, tvyordi znak. And by the way, we can see that that is a masculine word, znak. 
and therefore it's modified by this masculine adjectival form, tvyordi znak, u, miachki znak, soft sign, literally, e, u, ya. Finally, just to practice these letter names, uh, you can look for fun at a few Soviet acronyms. These are, were sort of a notor notorious feature of Soviet life that survives still today in terms of various government agencies and bodies and whatnot, uh, sometimes names of companies uh, that consist of these uh, very long and elaborate phrases that have been compressed into little acronyms, uh, which are normally read out just by naming the letters, the, the, the names of the letters as we just learned them. In, in a few cases, they may be treated as though they were a word. Um, so watch for that difference. Uh, and uh, as we do this, we can look at a few important Soviet era terms and uh, learn a bit about Soviet history. The Russian for USSR is SSSR. SSSR. And that stands for Soyuz Sovietskich Socialistichskich Respublik. Soyuz Sovietskich Socialistichskich Respublik. Quite a mouthful. So abbreviated to SSSR. SSSR. The Kommunistischeia Partia Sovietskova Soyuza. If you look at that, the first two words there, Kommunistischeia Partia, chances are you can guess the meaning, Communist Party. And we'll learn eventually that Russian does have a, quite a large number of borrowings from European uh, languages and uh, it makes certain words very easy to recognize. Anyway, Kommunistischeia Partia Sovietskova Soyuza, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, its acronym is KPSS. KPSS. Now we have a brief history of uh, Soviet era security organizations, uh, all of them rather notorious, of course, uh, because they were charged, especially in the early days, right in, uh, under the Cheka of eliminating class enemies, right, and executing the so called uh, Red Terror which was meant to terrorize, you know, groups that were viewed as antagonistic to the revolution. Uh, they were supposed to literally, literally be terrorized into submission. Uh, that helps explain the somewhat euphemistic name uh, that was first given to this body, the Cheka, the Trezvichaina Commissia, literally the extraordinary commission. They were given an extraordinary commission, so to speak. Chika. Chika. As you may know, that organization underwent a series of name changes, not all of which are necessarily reflected here. Uh, eventually, they were called the NKVD. NKVD, meaning the Narodny Commissariat Vnutrinich Diel, the People's Commissariat for Internal Matters, literally. Inkavede. Next comes the name everyone knows. KGB. KGB. The KGB. And that stands for Komitet Kosudarstvinli Bizapasnisti. The Committee for State Security, literally. Or the Committee of State Security. Uh, you may know that the, the KGB, the Soviet security uh, organization, is still in place today. It's just changed its name. It's called the FSB, 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 Federalnaya Služba Bezapasnosti, the Federal Service of Security. Another not notorious Soviet term that we'll be talking about quite a bit, and in fact, Near the end of book two, we'll be reading a short story by Shalamov uh, concerning uh, life in the Soviet prison 
system, the gulag. Uh, what does that word mean in Russian? Well, it's a uh, an abbreviation of Glavnaya Upravlenya Lagiriei. Again, a bit euphemistic. That means something like the main directorate of the camps. Uh, and we say in Russian, gulag, gulag. The USA is Sesha, Sesha, Sedinionne Stata Ameriki. Sesha, or in normal speech, this typically sounds more like Sesha, Sesha. Now, NATO is uh, again an acronym, but it's sort of adopted in, into Russian from the English and it's pronounced as though it were a word, right? So in this case, we don't call out the name of each letter. We just simply say NATA, NATA. Similarly, the Organizatia Abidinionich Nazi, the Organization of United Nations or the UN, is called ON, ON. The Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs is also pronounced as though it were an actual word, mid, mid. Ministerstva inostranich diel, the Ministry of Foreign Matters or Foreign Affairs, I guess we should say. Gai, Gai is the dreaded state auto inspectorate, the Gosudarstvene Afta Inspeksia. And you'll see these guys uh, in Russia, you know, on the sidewalk or the side of the street, waving these uh, zebra colored little sticks around and flagging uh, motorists for no particular reason to pull over and have their papers inspected and so forth. Uh, so watch for that when you're in Russia. Uh, sometimes students who are spooked by the Russian police, they they see one of these uh Gaishniki, and they they panic. But keep in mind that they're they're only going to pull motorists over. They're not likely to stop just pedestrians. Finally, we have the VDNH, and that's short for Vystavka Dostojeni Narodnova Khazyaistva, the exhibition of the achievements of the national economy. And that refers to a gigantic uh, complex uh, in Moscow with a huge gate uh, that was once used, as the name suggests, to display all of the bounty and all the accomplishments and inventions of the Soviet economy. And it had little vestibules for each of the member uh, republics of the Soviet Union. Uh, today, it's being uh, fairly extensively remodeled and renovated and uh, cleaned up and it's a great place to go stroll around and just see the uh, the Soviet architecture and get a sense of the incredible scale uh, of, of, of the Soviet project. That's it for today and that concludes our coverage of Russian Russian pronunciation. Uh, we've covered all the all the basics uh, and as typically in this book we'll try to cover each topic we come to rather exhaustively. So there's really not a whole lot we've left out of this uh, this lesson. So I would continue to return to these three first uh, daily lessons and practice over and over as you continue to develop your Russian pronunciation. Tomorrow, in one day, in one fell swoop, we'll learn to write Russian cursive. So bring, a, bring plenty of paper and a writing implement, and together we'll practice uh, learning how to write the way Russians actually do. Until then, до свидания, товарищи.